you wrote a, a recent Forbes piece where you said that CMOs need to become quota carrying leaders accountable for delivering that like predictable pipeline of opportunities in the organizations. Can you tell us why it's so important for CMOs to do this? It's a piece that is controversial because normally Indeed. it's it's very controversial um, mm -hmm. because most people associate the CMO with with the brand, you know, with with the communications. And 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 believe me, those parts are very important. Uh, but the challenge with the CMO's uh, role is that we cover so many disciplines. If you think about it, is the brand, is the creative, is the communication, social media, PR, and I'm just talking about one part. Then you get into everything that is demand generation, your campaigns, your events, your website, and, and so on. I could, I could line up maybe like 20, 30 different disciplines that I have to be looking after. As an economist, I know very well that there is unlimited desires for limited resources. So it's all about the prioritization. If you don't prioritize being responsible for that contribution to the revenue, you are not going to have the time, the credibility, the support that is needed to take care of all those other things that are still important. I'm not saying that you only do demand generation and then that's it, you forget about the rest of the things. What I'm saying is that you have to prioritize because as we know now, the average is what, 25 months uh, tenure? The brand, there's gonna be certain things that are just gonna take a little bit longer and they're a little bit harder to measure. But if you start by really owning to that contribution to the pipeline, to the revenue, you are going to be able to show to your board with proven results. You're going to have your, you know, your peer support. You're going to get the budget. You're going to get the, the, the support that you need to being able to do all the other things that are extremely important. You just asked me in the previous question, like, how do you make sure that, that people feel comfortable with the quality of the technology that people are bringing to the table? And of course, you know, the branding, the messaging, the corporate campaigns, it's really important. But if you don't own that contribution to the revenue, then you're always going to want to be at the big kids table, but then not that much because it's a little bit uncomfortable to own a number. It's uncomfortable. But that by or putting the, the steps in the right order, you prioritize your efforts, and that's why I think that it's extremely important for CMOs to have longevity in the tenure and to mm -hmm. be able to have a platform that allows you to help many more people, including your customers and your team, is that you need to be able to prioritize these things. I mean, you talk about one way to align with sales and marketing is to have a marketing leader have a, qu a quota carrying accountability. And, you know, and think about this age old question of sales and marketing and, you know, and how they can really work in partnership. Well, if I'm in charge of sales and you're in charge of marketing and we're both responsible for contributing to you know, we're both quota carrying, you know, executives and our teams understand that as well and add value there. That's huge. I mean, that's tremendous. Is that, has that been pretty useful in aligning, you know, marketing and sales for you? And, and, and what other strategies are helpful when it comes to aligning marketing and sales? It's been phenomenal. As a matter of fact, when we present to the, to the board, I present pipeline for everybody. We don't mm. make a differentiation of what sales was marketing. We have deeper analysis, of course, separately on what tactics are working, what channels are working. But that presentation is, is done together. And I'm the one that presents that, um, that portion. We have um, you know, a weekly interlock between sales and marketing for that strategic. It's not a place where I, we just go and present and say, hey, this is, the, this is the you know changes to the brand, or this is changes to the creative, or these are the events are coming up. That happens again separately. In this interlock, we look at the numbers together and we can do it, and again, why is it that I join People AI? Because it provides me that data set, that clear path to success without having silo representation of the data. So both Zach Sikora, my, my partner on the, on the sales side, you know, we look at the same data, we look at the same 
Am I delivering on that marketing engagement? Is he delivering on the sales engagement? Where do we see gaps that maybe marketing should be having different campaigns? How do we really, you know, course correct when we have gaps? So what I would say that is almost like, like three steps. The data has to be a source of truth that both parties can, you know, can deliver. The accountability has to be on all the, you know, on all the parties. And then the orchestration on the day to day, it's really owned by, again, by both, both parties getting together on a weekly basis to really mm. look at pipeline together. Hey everyone, thanks for watching. This segment is brought to you by Salesforce. Salesforce brings marketing and engagement together. If you wanna learn more, head over to salesforce.com forward slash marketing. And please subscribe to this channel for more marketing insights from the world's best marketing leaders across the Fortune 500 and beyond.